Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and here we are again another episode of building this signal box now it's um it's been quite warm up here in the loft 38 to 39 degrees it's been and um, hence why uh, this video is a little bit late but um yeah, I'm persevering today, as it were. <laughs> yes. So, where do we finish? Well, the next thing to do is to at least finish this off, ready for the roof to be added. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing next. So, let's mosey on over to the bench. Right, so here we are, back at the bench, and what we're going to do now is the running boards, and I'm just going to set them at that height. They're roughly about uh, five or six mil below this windowsill, and that will be um, the right height for this handrail here, which will be about uh, 14 millimeters off the uh, running boards. And uh, the sheet I'm using is the old Wills planking sheet. You normally get this with level crossings and such like. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to keep it as narrow as possible. So I'm just going to use just two planks, which roughly works out at six millimeters. So that'll be ideal. Then I'll make some little brackets up, which will go up underneath, and then we'll just glue this in place. And, uh, so I've cut my strip now and I've cleaned up the edges and um, given them a little bit of sanding on one corner, the corner that's going to stick out on the outer edge. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll just flush it with the edge on that side and mark it here. I'm not going to cut it there because what I want to do is come the thickness of this running board and then cut it and then uh, the running board then can go that way um, as far as the edge of the windowsill here so that is the plan so if I just draw up that there so that's the same as it is on the top as it is on the bottom which it is so I can just mark it there And then mark it again for 6mm and then cut it off. Keeping it nice and square if possible. So you can see I've got a little bit of a butt joint there so that will butt up there like that. And then we'll work out the length that I need from that corner to there. And then we'll glue this corner together. And it'll form like an L shape. Right, I'm now drilling the 0.5 um, holes. Just one either side of the 1.5 mil holes. As you can see, there's a little tiny bit difference and um, I've had to use um, a hand drill which can actually hold this tiny tiny drill bit but uh, it does seem to be working quite well as I'll show you in a minute once I've done this last hole now the the length of the brackets you got the width of the brackets which is five mil the length of the brackets is 6mm and uh, where the pencil lines are that go across from side to side here I've already pre-scored them with the Stanley blade so hopefully um, they should cut off where I want them to cut without um, moving I'll just make sure I clean them holes out. I'll give you a quick look at what I've just done. Now 
there as you can see it's not perfect but uh, I think that'll look quite good when it's painted black once you've drilled the holes and cleaned the holes out um, the next thing to do is just t take a drill bit and deburr the little holes this will hopefully help to stop the any paint from clogging up the holes because they're so tiny so that's what I'm doing just cleaning the edges of the holes putting a tiny countersink in probably but uh, yeah hopefully it'll stop the paint from clogging up the holes And this is how I set up gluing the brackets to the running boards and they're roughly 18 millimeters apart and, uh, and with using the rule you can see if that corner is square and it is which is good so hopefully that should line up with the building when we come to glue it on so we shall let that um, brackets and uh, running boards to dry for now let the glue harden and then we'll um, paint it and then glue it onto the signal box so what we'll do now is I'll just put the glazing in the glazing is quite straightforward so the wheel sheets packaging comes in really handy for fitting the glazing uh, the hardest part is getting your pieces cut nice and square to fit into uh, the corners. Um, the glue that I use is the uh, Deluxe Glue and Glaze. Um, quite a lot of people swear by it because when it dries, it dries very, very clear and uh, you can barely see where the glue had been originally. So I just put a little bit on a toothpick and put it, the glue, where it's needed and try and spread it quite thinly. Try and get it right into the corner there. And then that'll hold in the previous sheet that I've put in because I've already put in this window here and then a little bit along the windowsill edge which is that edge down in the bottom so if I put a little bit along there and then that window will be ready to fit in and it's as easy as that Right. Now that the glazing is done, um, next thing I want to focus on is the roof. Yes, we're finally going to make a start on the roof, but in order to do that I need to create a platform as it were for the roof to sit on. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some 5mm by 1mm plastic strip and uh, that's what we're going to do here, hence why we have miters in the corners um, which is just going to overhang by about three, three and a half mil um, and uh, I think that will give it the, uh, the lip and the foundation for the roof that I'm looking for Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm making up the end panels which go on the sides of the signal box um, as you can see that apex there once cut out will be glued onto the side there um, as you can see so before I cut these out I am scribing them to form the planking on the outside 
um, roughly one mil spacings as we go all the way up to the tip here and uh, hopefully that will just show up when we paint it moving on a little bit as you can see I've got the uh, side walls up on the signal box um, both ends and I've put some supporting struts but I've kept them low because there's going to be more panels um, for the lift off section for the lift off roof if you if you if you like um, so that's just to give you an idea what it might look like it's just going to overhang a little bit you shouldn't overhang no more than this edge here so yeah so that's um, coming along quite well um, you've noticed I've left a gap there between the supports to allow the cables to come up through and into the lift off roof so that's the the next stage I've cut a little template here so I can make some more of these supports using the 2 mil plastic car sheet um, for the roofing um, I'm going to need about four of these I think uh, two to house the LED and two just to give it extra support right so we're still on the roof at the moment um, as it were <laughs> I've marked some pencil lines um, on the inside of the roof now that's for uh, this little plate which you'll see more of later um, this is gonna house the LED so I've got to drill a hole in that um, so we've still got some more of these um, corner apexes to glue in now this has got a little tab on it so that tab is for the plate and it's, it's two mil dropped uh, in depth from the edge so once the LED is sorted out tested and works all I have to do is just drop the LED into that and, uh, and glue it in so yeah so that's where we are at the moment um, it does fit quite neatly on there as you can see you've got nice um, corners there so there's no gaps or anything um, we have a nice joint across the top but um, we still got to put the capping stones on so I'm going to use some plastic strip for that some right angle plastic strip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to score every 6mm a line either side and then that will then be glued on there and that will form the capping stones the paint has now dried on these um, panel boards along with the brackets I, I don't know if you can see that but you can just make out the holes where we drilled them earlier so this is now ready to glue on uh, I did say I was going to paint the brackets black but I thought I'd uh, leave them red so yes yeah, so once they're glued on and uh, just another little detail we're slowly getting there with this signal box so we shall glue them on just using the old contact adhesive we're forever moving forward on this build um, as you can see the roof is now finished now along with the capping stones or the ridge stones for the um, roof and I've also putting these flash boards here um, the only trouble I had with the flash boards is I've had to notch out the corners a little bit 5 mil in by 1 mil deep you can see there and that was to allow the roof to fit in nicely and get the roof to drop at the height that I wanted to so that's that little job done I might trim them running boards back a little bit yet I'll have to see because they do look like they stick down a bit too far here at the front um, yeah I might just do that cut them so they're level with this board here right um, once that's done I think the next job will be to fit 
the interior and also the LED um, to the roof. So I think I'll do the LED first and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Right, so I'm now preparing the LED. This is a 3mm LED, um, which is a warm white. Uh, I quite like using these uh, warm white ones because they do give a different glow in rooms of the buildings that I do. So just, I've already put a little bit of flux on my resistor, so I'm just tinning the resistor. Just helps to uh, adhere to the LED. Now, the LEDs have a long leg and a short leg. Uh, I've already cut the long leg. Now, the long leg is the live, so the resistor goes on the live leg. Now, I'm trying to keep it steady while I uh, solder this on. These helping hands do come in handy, <laughs> forgive the pun. So that's the resistor on. Now as always I always put a red cable to the resistor because I know that that will be the live side. So I'll just... Right, so I'll just cut that back. Just cut that back on the resistor. And then we'll do the same with that. I will tin or put a little bit of flux on that side of the resistor as well. And then we'll put a little bit of solder on there ready. You'll hear that little hissing noise, that's the flux melting. And we'll do the same with this red core cable. We'll just add a little bit of solder to that. Now I've deliberately left that long so I can cut it short. Just put a little bit more on. That's better. You can actually see the solder on there now. So I shall cut that back, take a little bit off of that, dip it back in the flux and solder this to the LED, not the LED, the resistor. Right, and then that's that done. And all we'll do for the other side, the negative side, I'll just cut that back a little bit more and solder my blue cable, or in this case it'll be purple, onto, onto that leg. And then that's that done. Obviously I put a little bit of heat shrink over each of the soldered joints. And then we'll uh, give that a test, make sure it works. Then we can um, drill a hole in the plate, super glue that into the plate, test it again. It's very important to, to test it again. And then that then can be glued into the roof. And that'll be job done. So here's the LED fitted into that uh, ceiling plate, as it were. You can see um, the insulation on the live and the neutral and I put a little bit of insulation slightly bigger to go around the two cables that just gives that a little bit of a strength for when um, it's glued into the, the roof um, yeah so that's ready now to glue into the roof I've tested it and it works and hopefully that will just fit in there like so and this is where the cutter is for the chimney and that'll just the cables then will just slip into the hole and they won't be seen um, as you can see I've cut back the flashing on the um, 
roof as well and it looks a lot better on the signal box so I shall glue that in and uh, next thing to do is to paint the roof itself I have now glued the LED ceiling plate into the roof so while I'm waiting for that to cure the glue that is I thought I'd um, putting the guttering and drain pipes now these are wills um, drain pipes and guttering as you can see I've already got the guttering in there so I'm just adding this down pipe to go in somewhere just about there hopefully that will get a stick to that even though it's been painted I have to be really careful when I come to paint this so yeah hopefully that's got a hold and then, then we can paint all that as well I'm not going to bother putting it down this side because the runoff it's going to go this way and around and down that pipe. But I have stuck a piece on the back so it'll run off and go down that way. And I'll put a little piece in here because of the slopes of the roof go that way and that way. So I will put a down pipe and a bit more guttering in there. I just thought I'd show you that before I start painting the, the end panels and the... Um, the rest of this before I put the roof back on. Right, as you can see I've painted the um, guttering and downpipes in the same um, red, as it were, the burgundy red, and I've uh, finished off the roof. Uh, now the roof, I did that in two-tone grey, um, I used the satin 126 um, as the base coat and then I went over the top in very very lightly with some matte 27. Now the matte 27 is actually on the ridge tiles as well so um, hence why we have the, the two tone there. Um, I painted the panelling either side uh, in a semi white and when I rubbed off the paint on the Mat 27, I did some downstrokes on the panelling and then I went over the top with some Citadel Grime Green just to give them panels uh, a rain wash as it were. And I've done the same with these um, fascia boards as well. And I've painted the chimney pots. Um, two colours there, a matte 46 and a matte 186 brown. The matte 46 is a, is a dark yellow and then I mixed a little bit of brown together I and mean, that's how we got the, the clay pots. And if we look closely at those chimney pots, if I get them into focus, you can see the turned lines that we did a few weeks back. Here you can actually see turn line so that they, they've come out quite well so um, we might as well go and have a look at this on the layout hopefully I can um, temporarily wire the lights up so let's go and see and don't that look different now that it's got its roof on It's slowly coming together. There's only one thing left to do and that's um, detailing the inside which we'll come to do um, next time. Um, the roof it still looks too clean in my mind. Maybe I've got to add a little bit more green mould to it. Um, especially with the got trees hanging. Well not hanging but uh, growing just above the signal box. So there'll be a lot of leaves and scatter and, and stuff which will probably fall down and leave moss on, on the building itself so maybe 
that's something I can also add. So I think that's all from me this time. Thanks again for watching and um, take care for now. See you again soon. Bye.